Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Brian as always. Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. I haven't seen too much of this on YouTube, so I'm hoping maybe I'm going to start a new trend. I'm going to do a dual unboxing where I'm basically going to unbox both of these items. There is a method to my madness, so stick around for Chanley Style! Okay, now before I get started, I just want to let you guys know, if you're only here for one of the two unboxings, down in the description below will be links to the time so you can only watch one or the other. But I would recommend you should stick around for the end when I compare how they work together and put some of the known issues to rest. Let's start off with the motherboard. We got the MSI motherboard. It's A88XM Gaming Series. Really love this logo. It looks really nice. It said recommended by Enfatic Fnatic Fnatic. I'm sure it's Fnatic, but I'm bad at reading. We got the Killery 2000 Gaming Network, which is supposed to help uh, decrease lag in gaming. What socket it is? FM2 Plus. Uh, a series and we already said that A88X. Um, Just game by MSI. More logoing and part numbers. Twenty different languages of why this thing is awesome. And yeah, so on the back we have audio boost, uh, killer Ethernet, and overclock Genie Four. So hopefully this will be very easy to overclock. Then more stuff on what's inside the box that we will cover when I open it. Rich features of multiple GPU, Sound Blast Cinema, uh, military, military Class 4, which uh, I can respect, and gaming device ports. Alright, sounds good. Let's go ahead and open this up. Ooh, that brand new plasticky smell. There it is right there. You know what, let's just set that aside for now and I will look at more stuff later. Inside we have quick installation guide. We have the MSI utilities, which I'll just be downloading off the internet anyway. Here we have right angle to straight static cables, which I don't know if that's gonna work for my build. Hopefully I got some extras laying around. One thing I want to just mention too is for having a black and red color scheme, putting white SATA cables in the box just seems like a really silly idea, but I want to say a different S word. The back IO. Very nice case badge. It's pretty big. I wonder where I'm going to put that on the case. Okay, this is a little ridiculous. A do not disturb gaming door hanger. I'm not here and sorry busy gaming. My gaming studio wasn't in the basement. That would make total sense. Nobody ever comes down here. And then the very important user's guide. Starting bottom left and going all the way around we have the audio boost. The audio, the audio connector here, which if you look, is segregated from the rest of the board so to reduce static. You got your PCIe times 16 slots, 1 and 4, and then PCIe times 1 slots. You got your audio connector, I already said that. Uh, system fan, junction, JTPM, Not probably not going to use either of those. USB 3.0, which is probably going to be a problem. We'll see how that works out. You got your J, um, your intrusion junction switch, which you can connect to see if people are trying to break into your case, which is actually kind of cool. USB connections. You got your front panel, like hard drive switches, blah, 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 blah. Instead of one through eight. Your slow mechanism, which is for uh, overclocking and fan speed. Reset power overclock genie. You've got your overclock genie switch 1 and 2. 1 is blue, 2 is red, and the LEDs are tiny and somewhere in this general area. For 
uh, dual channel DDR3 RAM slots you got CPU header for fans CPU slot your 8 pin power connector and your system fan for USB 3.0 to USB 2.0 a P2P for you know old keyboards and mice, DVI, VGA, HDMI, DP, optical audio out, Ethernet, and then your 7.1 audio. If you look down the motherboard, you'll see that the V Core cooler is even shaped like a dragon's head. Next, we have the R9280X by XFX Play Hard. Give that a quick slice. Wow, what the hell? There. I was thinking I was going to lose my man card. Couldn't even get a box open. Inside we have warranty support card. I'm going to set that aside. going to need that later. We have advertisements for their PSUs, very nice. Uh, ch -ch -ch. Other great FXF, XFX products. Woot. More buy our stuff, limited warranty, gonna need that too. We have driver CD installation. That looks like that's Windows 98. Okay. Um, and then the disc that I probably will not be using because the internet's better. Underneath, we have a Crossfire Bridge, two Molex to six pin, and two six pin to eight pin. If, if you're building a gaming computer and you don't have the right power supply, then you've got problems. All right, here we go. This is what we're all here to see. Get rid of that. And there it is. Nice red and black color scheme. It's got plastic on everything to make sure that it comes to you in a very nice fashion with no scratches. Covers on everything. I love to see covers. Even two little covers here for the crossfire bridges. Man, that looks nice. Here we have two mini HDMIs a regular HDMI, VGA, and DVI. This is an extremely impressive cooler on this graphics card. There are six heat pipes, if you can see down in there, to really disperse the heat very evenly and well. Two fans. You look up here, you even have a six pin and an eight pin connector. The end of the card really doesn't show much. There's, you can see the four heat pipes right in there. This is just a very beautiful card. I can't wait to try this out. Now a lot of gripes I've seen online is that with this motherboard, there is no space for the motherboard connectors with the second VGA card installed. There's basically no way to really hook this up with the card in the way. Yeah, definitely not going to be able to access the USB 3.0. So that goes away. As you can see, this is definitely a design of hindsight. If you look, all the connectors have a pretty subjective amount of stress on the back of them. There's basically absolutely no way to utilize the USB 3.0 connection right there unless I find a, rad find a right angle connector. Or if I water cool the GPUs. Another thing I would like to put to rest is the cross bridge, the crossfire bridge issues. This is the bridge that was supplied to me from the company. 
and it fits just fine even with one space right here in the middle. Everyone's complaining that they didn't think this through or that XFX doesn't care about their customers. Well, look, right here, boom, done. This even came in the box. XFX already said that if you have problems and you need a longer bridge, they will be more than happy to send you one. In fact, they offered to send me one until I realized this would work just fine. Alright guys, thanks for checking out my dual unboxing. I am in contact with MSI right now to find out if there's a solution for the USB 3.0 um, issue. If there is, I'll post it down below. If there isn't, there'll be a link on how I'm going to modify this to make it work, if I can. If not, then I'm just going to have to deal with not being, with not having USB 3.0 in the front headers, which honestly isn't that big of a deal. Anyway, thanks for checking out my video. If you liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more dual unboxings where you see how things work together, put it in the comments. Also, give me a thumbs up for that too. I know you can't give two thumbs up, just give me a thumbs up for either of them. That would be appreciated. Go ahead and follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch. And, like always, this is Chanley Style.